Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have been cooking up a storm. I'm working on my next budget friendly meal plan. So I may share one or two recipes with you today and then have the rest of the plan and everything ready this weekend at some point, hopefully. Plus I have to do some cleaning and I want to give you a little bit of a garden update and a little bit of news. I finally got my Amazon storefront um, all set up. So that is ready. And there's a link in the description. If you want to check that out, I have all my favorite cooking and cleaning supplies, my meal planner, all that stuff all in one place. And I am working on some downloadable content for um, helping uh, people stay on a budget for grocery shopping. So that should be ready in a few weeks, hopefully, uh, once I figure out the design and everything that I wanna make. And hopefully I'll be able to make that free for a certain version and then maybe have another version that has everything all together for a super inexpensive price. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, let's get started. Everything is looking relatively happy today. I did do quite a bit of pruning on this one here and trellised it a little bit. I do have quite a few um, hornworms, but again, they, they are eating a few of the tomatoes, which is odd. This year is the first time I'm actually seeing that. But like I said before, I have plenty, so I'm not too worried about it. Plus I captured a few ladybugs, which I see the one that was over here. Oh, there it is, it's still here. You can kind of see it. Um, let me get closer and it hasn't come out yet, but hopefully it'll be out in a couple of days and it can help me eat some of the pests on here. That tomato plant is also starting to grow quite a bit, which I'm happy about. So hopefully it'll start producing more tomatoes. I'm not sure if I'm going to let these stay over the winter time and see what happens with them. It just depends on how healthy they are. I went ahead and harvested some jalapenos last time. Um, I went ahead and used most of them too on nachos and some other things we were eating. And I want to clip the rest of these as they get more ripe and freeze them and see how that works out. I had to stake my bell pepper plant a little bit too because it was leaning quite a bit. It's pretty heavy from all the bell peppers this year, but I'm very happy that it's doing well. This is, I think the third year I've had it. And this is the first time I'm getting some full size bell peppers. So you can see down here below my um, tomato plant, there's all this frass, as it's called. And uh, that's when you know you have a hornworm. So here it is right there. You can see it here, um, eating away, having its snack. And again, I'm not too worried about them. I think I have a lot right now, um, but so far they aren't doing a ton of damage. So I'm, I'm okay with it. And I also have this weird theory that I have no idea if it's true or not, but it seems like whenever the hornworms show up, that's when my tomato plants are at their healthiest. And anytime there's no hornworms, that's when I have other pests like spider mites, white fly, and that sort of thing. So I wonder if the hornworms are actually helping um, and kind of keeping away some of those other pests because they eat so many leaves and um, maybe it just doesn't allow the other pests to sort of take over. I'm not sure if any of that is true. I've never heard that before, but it's just um, something I'm, I'm um, observing in my garden. Um, so if you've seen that in yours, let me know because I'm really curious to know if um, that's the case. If maybe you've gotten rid of hornworms and then had more other problems, um, I'd like to hear about it. I wanna kind of see if that's true or not. This bell pepper is finally coming back to life with all the wind and the heat. Um, I had to trim off the top like, oh, 12 inches or so um, because it was just completely dead and damaged. But now I can see that there's some bell, pepper, bell peppers forming. So I'm excited to have this one over here as well. It did well last year. These tomatoes that are right next to each other that are um, growing from seed, they finally look like they're affecting each other. So um, I do need to relocate I believe. I don't think they're gonna do well around the birch tree anyway. So I don't know if my dog ran it over or what happened, um, but it's definitely not happy, These both of these. So it needs a little bit of fertilizer. It needs me to move it into a different location. So I may be doing that later today. Plus I have random cilantro and carrots and chives just growing wherever. I'm kind of a chaos gardener. Um, I've noticed that if I just throw seeds everywhere, that wherever they land is where <laughs> they, uh, they tend to take off wherever they want to take off. You know, anytime I put things in a line, it doesn't seem to work out so well. Here are the cucumbers. I bought some fertilizer. I'm gonna be fertilizing that in the next couple days when it cools down, but I am finally getting some cucumbers, although they are um, some strange shapes. So I have to think that maybe that's due to either a pollination issue or maybe the nutrients. So I need to get some fertilizer in here. My Malabar spinach is growing, but it does keep getting eaten by something every time it gets new leaves. So I'm not sure um, how well it's gonna do. We'll just have to wait and see. 
Does anyone else have to walk with their hand in front of them in the yard? We have a lot of orb weavers, uh, the big spiders, that make giant webs everywhere, and I don't want to walk right into one. Lots of ladybugs in the ladybug farm. I don't know if you can see them too well here. Let me try to focus it on these ones. But there's some new, um, new ladybugs here. Oops, sorry y'all. Lots of ants on here too. But uh, there are quite a few ladybugs that are almost ready to come out. So here's a new one here you can see that just came out. And uh, these ones are getting ready to, to also come out and uh, become adults. Ton of ladybugs hanging out on this dead flower too. This zucchini plant is still doing okay. It does have a lot of powdery mildew. I went ahead and sprayed it with some water because I've read that powdery mildew happens because of moisture, but it seems like when they, the leaves are wet, I don't get as much powdery mildew. So I don't know if this is a different kind and it reacts differently, but I'm just trying something new this year because I've, I've battled this for a few years now. Doing the same thing is not working. So I'm just gonna try something different. And these two tomato plants here are really producing a ton. These um, sugar, what are they called? Sun sugar grape tomatoes are so delicious. You can see um, I harvested a ton yesterday and we have so many more. And the other one, I'm not sure what type. I grew this one from seed and I'm not sure um, what kind, but it ended up being yellow grape tomatoes as well. And these ones are definitely larger than the um, sun sugar, but they do taste sweet as well. The basil is really happy. I keep harvesting so that way it gets nice and bushy and doesn't get too woody. And this tomato plant is not super happy. The leaves are curling, but it is starting to give me some tomatoes. So that is interesting. I did give it some fertilizer a couple weeks ago and that did seem to help, but I'm not really sure why the leaves are curling. I don't know if there's some sort of bugs, maybe some spider mites, but I sprayed it with water just in case it was spider mites. And we're just gonna have to see how it goes with that one. That's it for a garden update today. Let's head inside and get started on some of the chores and the recipes. Here is the zucchini I forgot about <laughs> after a few days, um, so it's huge. And then there was one underneath it that was ready the next day, still a bit larger um, than I like, but this is a, a, just a little bit bigger than the size that I like to um, harvest. But as you can see the difference here, I'll probably use the really large one for zucchini bread because as it gets bigger, um, it's not as sweet and tender, so it's better when I grate it and then put it in a bread or something like that. I'm also experimenting with freezing some chopped zucchini for a soup I'm gonna be making shortly. So I'm interested to see how that turns out. By the way, if you haven't tried the viral pasta that uses, I think it's borsa cheese or borsin cheese. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Um, you should definitely give it a try. It's super easy. I shared the recipe last week, but I found these two at my store for a dollar off because they were about to um, go past the best before date. So I just put them in my freezer and I'm going to be trying that soon from frozen. This is sh uh, shallot and chive and then caramelized onion and herbs. And then I also have a rind from my Parmigiano Reggiano that I want to put this in a soup or maybe like a minestrone or something like that because I've read that that's what you can do with the rind. So I'm interested to try that out too. Here's all the tomatoes that I harvested yesterday and I froze a bunch that I, I picked the day before. So I have quite a few tomatoes. And did you see this cute little Dutch oven that I got from Aldi? It was $3.99 and I can't wait to make some things in it. I think I'm going to start with garlic confit. I just have to pick up a bunch of garlic because the ones I have in the yard are not ready yet. But it's so cute. And that's the bigger one that I have here. I think I might make like an artichoke dip or something like that in this one. I was having some serious trouble getting motivated to do anything on this particular day, so I didn't really get hardly any cleaning done. I did detail a couple of things in the kitchen, but as far as like the extra stuff, I didn't really do any of that. I wanted to meal prep a few things. I wanted to make some more no-knead bread. So this is just the two-hour no-knead bread recipe that I use. I like to measure out the flour using my kitchen scale. I just find that when I use the scoop and measure method, which works fine for a lot of recipes, I just feel like it doesn't work that great for bread and certain dough recipes. So I like to actually weigh it out like that. The kitchen scale did not cost that much, so I think it's been really worth it for me. Um, as far as all the cooking that I do, I like to measure a lot of things like that. So now I'm just gonna add some salt 
and the instant yeast, just a whole packet of that. That's a quarter ounce. And then just a little bit of honey, somewhere between a, a teaspoon and a tablespoon. I just, you know, kind of eyeball it. I mix that all together until it's thoroughly combined. And then I add one and a half cups of warm water, about 110 degrees or so. Mix that all up until it's kind of a shaggy dough. And then I'll just cover it. These are my beeswax wraps. Um, I like these instead of plastic wrap for the most part, and they're really easy to clean. I'm just going to set that aside for about an hour. And in the meantime, I'm going to start on my homemade chicken broth, but uh, my stovetop is just crazy dirty. I cook on this like all day long and it just builds up super fast. So of course I'm looking at it and I feel like, oh my gosh, I need to clean this before I start filming because I'm going to be making a soup, which also uses a pot on the stove. So I just needed to get that done really quickly. So I did end up cleaning a couple of things today. And then of course the, the faces of the cabinets there, I saw they were dusty. And so I had to clean those really quick. I don't know if y'all have any advice for keeping those um, dust free, but they kind of build up like the grease and the dust. So it's kind of a pain. So definitely give me all your tips for that. And now I'm going to finally start the homemade broth, which is very easy. I made a slow cooker chicken the other night and just shredded the chicken off and saved all of the skin and bones and just froze it until I was ready. And then a bunch of veggie scraps that just sit in my freezer until I'm ready to make stock or broth. And in this case, um, I'm using both because I'm making a broth for a soup tonight. So I'm just going to cover that with water and let it simmer for a couple hours, two hours at least usually. Then I'll just take out these big pieces and then strain everything. If you find any chicken pieces that sort of fall off after you know this is all done that's perfect because we can just add that to the soup and then I'll just strain it and I recommend straining it over the sink just make sure that you actually put a bowl underneath you don't want all of that broth going down the drain it's happened to me before and I'm gonna save about two cups of this broth to make another lunch dish with quinoa tomorrow and so I should have that recipe for you maybe this weekend or so with all my budget-friendly things. So now that the dough has risen, I can go ahead and just shape it really quick. I'm just going to kind of pour it out here onto a floured surface, and I'm just going to fold over each edge so that way it kind of is in more of a ball shape. It's very sticky, so this is how I know that the dough is right is it's a little bit sticky. When I add the flour by just sort of scooping and measuring into a, um, you know, a dry cup, it doesn't end up sticky at all. And so it's a little bit more of like a dense bread. I feel like when it's a sticky dough, it's not as dense. And I could be wrong. I don't know that much about bread or dough, but this is just my experience. Once that forms a little bit more of a dough ball, so to speak, I'm going to put it on some parchment and just cover it loosely with that beeswax wrap. And I'm going to put my Dutch oven with the lid into the oven cold and then turn on the oven to preheat to 425. Once that's all heated up, then I'll go ahead and get in there and take off that um, lid super carefully, very, very carefully. It's very hot. And then I will lift up all that parchment with the dough in it and just carefully put it in there and cover it up. Now I'm just going to bake it for 30 minutes. And after that, I will take the lid off and cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes more. And that just depends on how crusty you like your bread. We don't like it super crusty. So 10 minutes, I feel like for us is the sweet spot on how brown and crusty we like it. We kind of like it on the soft side. So that's totally up to you. But it really smells absolutely delicious and the flavor is unbeatable. I do love to buy bread from the store here and there but just being able to make my no need bread like this in less than two hours has been a total game changer for me and I highly recommend giving it a try. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see y'all next time.